All right, guys. Well, here I have a 4T65E transmission, and uh, the issue with this transmission is a P1811 uh, trouble code, uh, maximum adapt and long shift detected. We're gonna open this unit up, and uh, we're gonna go through that uh, uh, 1811 uh, scenario trouble code. Uh, what that means: uh, 1811 maximum maximum adapt uh, and long shift. What that means is that the computer, the first part of the definition of the code is uh, maximum adapt, which is the adaptive strategy on the transmission, uh, is taking too much time for the clutch packs to compress. And uh, so what he does, uh, he detected a long shift. So uh, what the computer will do, will try to compensate with line pressure. If uh, the clearance is too great, it will set that trouble code, it will freeze the shift adapt, and uh, it will command high line pressure, so you will have high pressures at all time until you cycle the key off and then on, it resets again, it will start looking at, uh, at the shift quality. If it takes too long still for the clutch packs to compress, then it will uh, freeze the shifts, uh, the shifts adapts, and it will start uh, shifting what it f would feel like shifting normal and every now and then it will shift hard and you will have some hard downshifts, hard upshifts and uh, and all of a sudden you know you will say well my transmission is working fine but you have the 1811 it doesn't mean that the transmission is working fine is that the, the computer already went to the maximum adapt that, uh, that the computer can go and uh, if you cannot achieve a quick uh, compression on the clutch pack, uh, it's going to command the pressure to go high. So that's basically what it means. Uh, I just did a, another teardown video on one of these uh, 4G65s, but this one here had particularly that trouble code. And, you know, the customer said, well, you know, it works good and I could never do it to do, uh, you know, anything and then all of a sudden it shifts real hard and I mean it's just uh, uh, it's just like a symptom based problem and there is a problem in here I mean definitely most definitely we're gonna go through a lot of things here on this unit and uh, what to look for for the 1811 how to correct it and uh, well let's uh, let's go ahead and just do a tear down on this thing I mean I was gonna have it apart you know and try to you know talk about it but let's just do it this way. I know it was a long introduction for uh, this 1465 and the P1811 trouble code, but let's go ahead and uh, get our hands dirty. All right. As we can see here, the axle boot is torn. I mean, there's a lot of grease here. All right, so what we want to do on these studs always, you know, uh, it looks like only this one was used. It's a little bit cleaner than the rest of them and the rest of them they're dirty but you want to mark them anyways you know to see uh, just to make sure that they go back where they were you see they're all dirty except for this one has a little bracket here with the wire and the loom going through it all right so let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart Right quick. Right. Got a little extension. Right, let's see, we got two more down here. We got uh, some Torx 40s down there. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it that way just to have access for them. And normally what I do, I just kind of clean it up, you know, the inside of the of the bolt hole, and get my uh, T40 socket and kind of like go in there and kind of compress all that mud and just. Uh, crack it open 
I'm a little full today. I got another got a Honda transmission over there that I got it tore down and I just hope that it's not going to be in the way. All right. Okay, tap it. Got one more over here. And I think that's it. Go ahead and get the side cover off. Just be careful with this gasket. Get that out of the way for now. All right, electronics. This is an earlier model. Uh, I have another teardown video on this thing. And if you can see the already the from the other video on the other 1465 to this one, you can see a big pressure switch manifold. Uh, on the other one, it was a single switch manifold, and this is a multi-switch uh, manifold. Uh, all our electronics. Also, uh, pressure control solenoid. This is the large can pressure control solenoid. Uh, on the other video for the other 1465 was a small uh, Bosch uh, type uh, pressure control solenoids. They are not interchangeable. You cannot interchange them. Uh, if you have somebody trying to sell you the other, uh, say, the other uh, later model solenoid saying that it's an updated solenoid, it's not they did update it but they also change the port where they go in and uh, the valve body is also different so uh, they're not interchangeable so don't interchange them uh, put the right one in it you know got the temperature sensor looking at this wiring harness already it looks very very brittle the tabs are going to break uh, just be careful trying to uh, Unplugging this uh, harness as you see I already got one broke off The best thing I'm gonna try to do my best and get this thing disconnected, but My recommendations would be to uh, Just install a new harness if you get more than one broken tap like you see here. I mean very very brittle they get brittle with uh, with heat and time this is an older unit. Yeah, I'll just get another harness for this thing. It just broke off. Everything broke off. I mean, even the conduit, I mean, so brittle. All right, get this thing out of the way over here. So issues we have uh, on this earlier model, uh, Solenoids, the solenoids, they stick a little, uh, very little uh, metal uh, contamination will stick the solenoid. It will give you 1811 trouble coat. Let's go ahead and uh, continue disassembling this thing. Let's go ahead and take the pump off. We got two 10 millimeter bolts here. Actually, I'm going to start putting everything in here. Got a little bucket there. Uh, got an 8mm. This is our pump cover. You can actually remove the pump completely like that. It has one white bolt on it. And that little bolt is, uh, you can take that off to get the cover off. We're going to go ahead and take this off. We want to look in here. This is a vein type pump. The later models have some pins going through it and they are kind of a pressed in and you just move the pins out and uh, you can get it open. I was going to show that on the on the other video and I totally forgot to show it on video. I did open it up you know and uh, clean it up and change the oil rings and the slider thing that goes in here. Whenever you do an overhaul uh, you got to change those. So this is what it is, a uh, vein type uh, pump. As you see here, I'm removing the veins. 
and uh, has two expander rings, one on each other, on each side, one here and one on the inside. All right, so here are the veins. I'm gonna put them right here in this shop towel. You wanna inspect, you can see where the slide moved and the rotor's rotating in there. I mean, it looks, uh, it looks like uh, some lines on it, but it's perfectly fine. You don't feel anything. It's just a shadowing effect that, that uh, it's not worn out. I mean, uh, I did a 6080 tore down uh, video, and those you could actually feel the grooves on it. Uh, this one is fine. Take the little roller out. It just slides out. And this is what the rotor looks like. Has a little bearing in there. This is the pump drive shaft. Uh, on this end, it drives the uh, pump rotor. And on the opposite end, it goes into the torque converter. And the torque converter is the one that rotates the pump. Here's the other expander ring. Here. And this is our pump assembly here. This is our slide, our pump slide, uh, low volume and high volume, and uh, it, it, it moves. You want to uh, check your slide on the inside as well. Uh, make sure you don't have no scorings or marking. It has some shadows on there, but this slide is in good shape. That over there. We don't have to remove this too, uh, just like the pump cover. These two white bolts are real small. I mean, it just uh, keeps it attached to the valve body. But we're going to go ahead and remove it just to show you the, the side of the pressure switch. Two short bolts. Got a 10 millimeter down here. Same as always, pressure switches, you kind of want to twist them off a little bit like that. And as you already see right here, one of the O-rings already fell. And it looks like somebody's been in here. It's missing. No, it's there. Yeah, but the, the O-ring kind of popped off. That's no big deal. These O-rings come in the, in the overhaul kit. You get a shop towel here and... Some of these are marked and some aftermarket ones are not. And it tells you which one is which in what position. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up, but I'm going to go ahead and get it closer to you guys. Look at here. All right, top switch. REV reverse. I'm not sure if he's going to pick it up or not. That's reverse. Here's this LO, which is low. D3. Uh, this one D4. This one D2. And this one says TCC. Torque converter clutch. All right, some are normally open and some are normally closed. We see three of each. Uh, we can get our voltmeter and just uh, touch these two ends to see if it's normally open or normally closed. And same thing on uh, this this side here. Uh, you can see one is uh, that's deeper than that, and uh, that's how you can tell. You know, we have both types of switches here, normally open and normally closed. And it's just a switch, it just closes, so you stick your finger in there, and you press on it, it's either going to go open, or it's either going to go close. This is a normally open, it's lifted, the piston is on top, you push on it, and then it touches the contact, this is normally uh, closed, you push on it, and it gets it away from the contact, and uh, I mean, this, this is what it is. Just the ohmmeter, you know, uh, you want to want to put it on your uh, the one that makes noise, you know, beep, you know, beep, you know, uh, just push on it, and you know if it's open or if it's closed. 
if you have a lot of resistance uh, let's say that you have one that's normally closed and you already see like three or four ohms on it I mean that switch is no good I'm gonna wait until the compressor turns off. Okay, here's the pump drive shaft. This end right here goes inside the torque converter and this is what spins your pump gear or your pump rotor. You have four check balls on the on the channel plate. One right here, two, three, four check balls. You can actually get a magnet and uh, just get them out of there. Don't worry about these things getting magnetized. Nothing happens to them. That's just on a textbook, but Nothing happens to them. I've been doing transmissions for 24 years, so uh, trust me, I do it all the time. All right, so this is our separator plate. We have uh, two uh, thimble screens here, and those are for our shift solenoids uh, screens. Uh, we have more check balls in here. We have two large check balls. We got one, two, three, and four more check balls here. Regular size. Three. Four, and then our two large ones. You always want to inspect uh, your valves. A very common valve that gets stuck is this one right here. It gets stuck in the open position or in the uh, up, uh, on position. And what it does, uh, it would slip in second gear or it will actually uh, sometimes would skip second gear. It'll go from first to third. Let me just uh, get a flashlight in here and kind of like look in there and it looks oh it looks normal. Let me see any other stuck valves. And you'll be able to see right away. But I already see some scratching on the valve, so this valve is probably not gonna be any good. We're gonna come back to this valve body, and sometimes this uh the one that has the bushing on it, you know, the one that has the the plunger, uh, it does. It sometimes it's it's a pain to get out. So uh, we're gonna come back to this thing. All right, we're gonna remove our channel plate now. Uh, word of caution: uh, these three bolts here sometimes are very very tight. I suggest that you get your best socket on it. Uh, if you have a brand new socket, get your brand new socket on it. All right, let's go ahead and take this three. Let's start with those three. And I'll put my impact and I brace myself. That one came out pretty easy. That one too. That one came out good as well. All right, the rest of them is no big deal. These three are kind of a pain, especially on the 440 T4s. That sometimes you have a uh, there are Torx head T40. You strip one of those. Oh man, you're gonna spend a, at least one hour trying to get those bolts out.
All right, torque sturdy. Uh, a ten, an eight, another eight, eight, and a ten. Go ahead and remove our channel plate gasket, and uh, we're gonna undo. Let's go ahead and take this off. I normally don't take the detent roller here off, but let's go ahead and take it off. All right, let's get the manual valve unlatched. Get this thing a little hook out of the way. All right, here comes your channel plate. You got two guide pins. You got one here and one here. They got both of them stuck on the channel plate. There is uh, an accumulator here. You want to check it. Make sure you take it out. And make sure that your springs are not broke. And then you want to kind of wiggle uh, inside of the, of the hole. Make sure that it doesn't wiggle sideways. If it does, it's no good. And I have very little. I do have a little bit of side plate. I'll just go ahead and put that in you. All right. Sleeve. Make sure that it's not ring grooved, which this one is in good shape. Actuator fit limit valve. That's another cause for a P1811 trouble code. If this valve uh, bore is uh, worn out, uh, it's going to give you uh, low uh, fluid uh, feed, feed oil to your actuators, which your actuators are actually your solenoids and of course your ply components like your clutch packs. Uh, it has to be able to hold and regulate the pressure and if it doesn't then um, I mean you're gonna have uh, 1811 trouble code, low line pressure and stuff like that. I'm gonna get, uh, let me see, hold on just one second. I'm gonna get my rubber tip, just put it on the on my blower. And we're gonna put air inside this uh, uh, feed hole, and you're gonna see air escaping through this side of the valve. Actually, uh, when feed oil comes in here, it's supposed to st stroke the valve. Let's go ahead and try that. I don't want to get too closer to the camera because it's gonna be uh, it's gonna probably splash in there. Here we go. See how the valve moves a little bit? See all that fluid coming out of the front? Now the valve is not moving anymore because it doesn't have any more oil in there. You moved a little bit with a little bit of oil. But you can see all that air escaping through the front of the valve. There is a, a valve for this thing. Uh, actuator feed limit valve. You can get one from Sonics. Uh, the one from Sonics, you gotta have the reamer. You gotta have the, uh, uh, you know, the jigs and uh, uh, the base uh, to put on your rig. Uh, and it comes with the sleeve. And if the sleeve wears out, you can just take the sleeve out and put another uh, full component in it. Or uh, the, the ones I like to use a lot, it's uh, from uh, Superior, and uh, that one you don't need to ream anything. Actually, uh, it comes with a plug that plugs this side of the, the hole, and comes with a new valve, and the lands are wider, and uh, with a new spring, and you use your original end clip. I think it's K098, that's the Superior part number for the actuator fit limit valve. This is a must. You have to do this. If you have an 1811 trouble code, you have to address this whether you put a shift kit on the trim machine or not. Uh, it has to be taken care of. All right. We don't need to remove the pan. Uh, we're not going to remove the pan right now. Fourth clutch. 
overdrive clutch hub now this one here this is an older clutch hub and they do strip I hope that the camera is picking this up how shiny that thing the splines are from here on up this thing is about to get stripped if this gets stripped you have no for no fourth gear all you have is first second and third and no fourth gear so this needs to be replaced on the other 1465 uh, transmission teardown I did uh, it, it, it was it had an updated one and you can see the difference in colors here it's heat treated uh, it's totally different so this one needs to be updated chains as well the way I kinda I mean you can see how it's lagging on, uh, while it's there this chain is wore out it's touching here if it touches the aluminum part here uh, to me it's no good there's other ways to test them but this is the way I test them I mean if they touch that new chains no questions about it all right what we did forget to take off is the torque converter clutch o-ring here let's go ahead and take that off all right flip it over this is the uh, reluctor for the input speed sensor and the input speed sensors on the channel plate Got to mention that on this video. Input speed sensor. Good luck, the wheel goes here. And uh, that's how he reads it. It is very rare that I see an input speed sensor fail on these units. I see it a lot on the 4080s on the Cadillacs. And on the Cadillacs, you have to put the input speed sensor on it, even if it's good because I've seen them fail regularly for some reason. Don't know why, but I have. Drive sprocket support. This is the drive sprocket support. This is the dryer sprocket. Sometimes you will have noise in park or neutral. And the, pro the problem is that uh, this bearing has failed and there will be cavitation on the race surface where the uh, bearing rise on here uh, that's what will make your noise this was not making any noise it looks in very good shape but the bearing is inexpensive and it is always a, a good idea to just replace it because if you know it fails uh, pattern failures always take care of pattern failures something that you see every day every day uh, take care of it I'm just gonna pry a little bit through there. Get our driven sprocket support. This is the drive sprocket support, and this is the driven. You got a chain here, and uh, it drives your driven sprocket support. And the driven sprocket support actually uh, rotates the input drum. This is a uh, Teflon coated washer and uh, you can already see that on one side it looks okay and on this side you can already see the brass so this washer needs to be replaced actually it comes in the washer kit just get a complete washer kit and that should take care of that all right two ceiling rings here there's two types of ceiling rings early and late and uh, the early models used to take a little expander o-ring this one does not so this is the late model all right we did not remove the uh, reverse servo sometimes this won't come out but it did came out fairly easily it's just the easier when you take the reverse servo out and uh, the band will open up and it will help you you know getting these assemblies out this frictions I don't know if the cameras uh, picking that up but this uh, friction lining is green uh, it's high energy uh, friction material some people call it Kevlar uh, coated or whatever uh, that's high energy okay we see one piece of a bearing here and uh, 
we see the other end over here Let's go ahead and take that out this one actually snaps on the inside of the drum you see the shape of that now you always want to check and make sure that the raise of the bearing is not pitted this is the bearing and it should snap in there there we go it's a little dirty and here's another bearing now normally you gotta remember the guy said that it will work perfect and then it will have like hard shifts so we're getting somewhere here now I want you to take a look at this you see uh, this drum is all the way up to the snap ring see how wide that uh, that gap is now let's go ahead and take this clutches out this is a second clutch drum this is second gear see how it popped back up I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why it does pop up like this see that and I kinda like moved it a little bit and it poop, popped up quote it was working good and you will see a lot a customer say man it's just this code I went to AutoZone it's just this code 1811 I mean it works real good and I mean every now and then it just bumps and you know, is the computer compensating for the uh, slippage? I mean, it will raise line pressure. That's why it's working, or it feels like it does. Look at this. Smoke. Not only smoke, but let me just show you something. See the the way the, the friction looks like this? There is almost nothing on this side. And there is a little bit of friction here. It's just with time and age, the friction starts flaking off. The friction plays. Look at this. This is no good on this side. It has nothing here. Looks like an old record. This one, you can see a little bit on it. You can see the same thing happening over here. Now sometimes when you see them bounce like that, see that? The steels are warped and they are warped because uh, I mean they heat does that, the heat kind of warps them up. And you don't see them all black and so, like sometimes I've shown you some uh, burn friction. So what would you see on a scan tool in a situation like this? Uh, you look in, into your adapt data and you would see the the seconds, you know how, because uh, it, it would actually show you how long does it took for the clutch pack to apply. The one with the longer time is the one that uh, it's slipping actually and the one that the computer will try to compensate so with all that clearance that you saw I mean that was a lot a lot a lot of clearance I mean is the piston is kind of traveling past is a uh, limit and uh, computer with raise line pressure and believe it or not these clutches were holding uh, because you were at maximum line pressure there is a molded piston in this drum these molded pistons they do like to wear and I do recommend that whenever you go through one of these units you put new molded pistons in it another thrust, thrust washer here we have our forward frictions forward frictions are not much of a big deal uh, but you can actually uh, get a uh, earlier style of friction uh, which is a little thicker and just add one to the uh, setup and it would work on the later models that have the ratchet type uh, sprag you cannot do that but you can get two frictions and shave uh, one uh, one uh, side on both of them and you sandwich them together and make one friction I mean you can do that
and they just look old they just look old you see here dark brown this is our third clutch this one does look like it has a lot of clearance on it and uh, it's just normal wear we're gonna open this uh, take the pistons off of this drum because you always want to check the forward clutch piston the reason you want to check the forward clutch piston they look good but old is because he wears out where the lip seal goes and uh, when that when that happens uh, the lip seal will tear or will roll and you will have uh, no forward engagement uh, in, in, like uh, intermittent no forward engagement or sometimes you would just lose it completely or sometimes you will let it warm up and then it would go again there's a lot of symptoms that uh, wear worn parts will, uh, will give you this is a regular style uh, Sprague type uh, Sprague assembly. These two are held together. Uh, you have forward and direct Sprags. One turns clockwise and the other one turns counterclockwise. Reverse reaction shell on this uh, unit uh, is very rare that this one strips. 4060s, I mean, for those of you that have been in the industry long long enough, I mean, you'll know what I'm talking about. They strip. All you have is just first gear. You have no reverse, and you have no second, third, or fourth. Remove our front planet. You always want to wiggle check them. Kind of sideways. And this one is very rare that I see that... Uh, that the washers wear. I see it a lot on the on the other planet. This one here. This one breaks. You can put a new one in it, or you can live without it. It's a little fluid dam that goes in between both planets. All right, this is the one that I see the the most where the uh, shims like to wear. This one I can see both of them on the bottom and on the top I can barely tell if they're both of them on there. This one I can see both of them on both sides, um, bottom and top. That one as well. And this one as well. This one, it's uh, questionable. I can see a little bit of brass in there. There we go. Yeah, they're both on there. But you got to be careful because uh, they they do sell the kit, the, the shim kit for these things. They used to sell the butterfly ones that you don't even have to take the, the pins out I don't know why they don't sell them anymore I mean it's a very common unit they came out for uh, 440 T4's transmissions and actually for the 125's or the 3 t 30 we have another sprag down here and uh, low intermediate band goes here applies there and our forward band applies here and rollers they make a noise let me see if I can I get it closer to the camera and rollers or roller clutch they do have uh, they do make noise I don't know if you can hear that but sometimes you will have a 4L60E transmission and it's all dry in there because it's all nice and clean and you rotate the shaft counterclockwise and you're like what the hell is that noise well, it's just a sprag noise, a roller clutch noise. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. That's just normal. So we take this uh, low intermediate band. It looks like a little 400 uh, band or a 4L80 band. It's actually smaller in size. This is a forward band, forward, and the same scenario here. Uh, high energy uh, friction lining it's green it's not black you always want to inspect the apply points here where the band actually does the uh, the apply so you want to make sure that that's in good shape which is in good shape on both of them differential uh, that's all that's in there let's go ahead and take the pan off and just look in there and uh, see what it looks like 
I just want you to see that it may not be as contaminated as you think. Look at this. Now, in your opinion, what do you think about this? I mean, you can see the shape of the filter here. So, uh, this pan hasn't been cleaned. The magnet looks in real good shape. I mean, if you look at it, there's not a bunch of, uh, you know, buildup, normal carbon buildup. Sometimes it looks real fluffy. There's no metal on it. You can see a little bit of brass down here, uh, like converter clutch uh, shadow, uh, converter clutch shadows on there. So uh, it could be deceiving. It probably was serviced a long time ago. This is an aftermarket uh, gasket, but it looks like it's been done a while ago. This is our filter. And it does feel kind of heavy, so it's partially restricted. Here you can see on the side of the filter some brass on it. See it's already draining on my bench. Which is a good sign that it's not restricted. Sometimes uh, you would see it uh, flow in one direction and not the other because uh, only part of one side of the filter is coming out. Uh, but this is looks in good shape. Accumulators, I talked about those accumulators on the other video. Anyways, uh, to correct the 1811, uh, this is going to need a full, complete overhaul. It's going to need all the bushings. It's going to need the actuator feed limit valve. It's going to need the pressure control solenoid. Uh, for this type of unit, it's going to need the chains. The chains are worn out. Uh, as you saw, we're going to need the steels for second clutch. They're warped uh, for second clutch. We can actually get this uh, little fluid dam and uh, put a new one in it. Uh, there is a valve that I always install. It's a Sonex valve uh, for the torque converter clutch. It has a ceiling ring on it. Uh, it goes right directly behind the, uh, not directly behind, but let's see. Here's the valve body. Yeah, it goes directly behind the PWM solenoid or the lockup solenoid. Uh, it has a ceiling ring on it because the end of the valve on this side likes, the bore likes to wear, not the valve. Uh, when that happens, uh, you will not have a torque converter clutch apply. It would slip, uh, slip going into a, a converter clutch apply. So that is uh, necessary. I mean, to me, it is uh, as well. And this valve lineup, you know, it gets all scratched up and and uh, damaged. All right, let me open up this drum right quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the piston and see what it looks like. Uh, give me a couple minutes, I'll be right back. Okay, so here we have this uh, piston. I'm going to get this closer to the camera. And it looks in real, real good shape. There's nothing wrong with this piston. And I hope to get one, someday, one piston that will be damaged. You would actually see some... Uh, uh, grooves on it and those grooves are the ones that get hung up on the drum and will tear the uh, uh, lip seal inside the drum you have two lip seals here you have one lip seal there one I took it off already uh, and then you have an o-ring in here and uh, I mean that's all it takes all right well 1465 EP 1811 trouble code what to look for, what causes it, and uh, I hope that you like this video and this has helped you some way or another. I did not tear the back of the... Uh, I tore this one differently than the other one, you know, because we just wanted to concentrate that on what was going on inside the unit that would cause the P1811 trouble code. Like I said, supposedly, and quote, it was working good other than bumpy, you know, uh, shifts and whatnot, and the uh, 1811 trouble code. Alright guys, well my name is Hiram, click the like, and uh, if you're not subscribed yet, subscribe, and uh, thank you for watching.